Welcome to Citygate Church today. We're so glad that you're joining us for our online service right now. Lambie Day, today's going to be another fantastic day. Of course, yes. Welcome to Citygate Church. Um, if you're new today, um, you have a lot in store. We're continuing with the series called God Will Do It yes. Again. Yeah. And that has been fantastic. It has, hasn't it? And we're going to be hearing more about that in just a moment. But before we do, Lambie Day, it's starting to get towards Christmas time, isn't it? <laughs> We've got something that we want to share with you, uh, a special look at something that we're doing this year that we would love you to be involved in. Take a look. Yes, it's that time of year again. We're ramping up to Christmas. We're getting prepared. We're writing those shopping lists and we want to invite you to be a part of something very special. The Big Give with Citygate Church in partnership with Food Plus Bromley. Every year we have the opportunity to put our generosity into action, to go above and beyond. And this year we get to do the same and put that little extra sparkle into someone's Christmas. Our goal this year is to provide every one of our Food Plus families with a special Christmas hamper overflowing with everything that you can need to have an amazing Christmas. We're talking all the treats, the Christmas crackers, the mince pies, the food and drink, the stuffing, the gravy, you name it. Not only that, but this year we are honoured to be partnering with Bromley Children's Project and also for the first time ever we'll be partnering with Riverside School right here in Beckenham and we are so, so excited to be able to give so many children lots and lots of gifts this Christmas. So come on, get involved in the Big Give this year. We'd love you to be a part of it. All you need to do is to pick up one of our lists of food items or a tag from the tree with a gift for a child and add something to your shopping. You don't need to wrap those Christmas presents. All you need to do is bring them to our donation point at Citygate Church by Sunday the 5th of December. That gives us time for those Christmas elves to get those gifts where they're going. Come on, be a part of the Big Give this year. It's gonna be absolutely brilliant. Let's together make a difference in the lives of others. Let's feed the hungry. Let's go above and beyond. Let's be generous and let's make someone else's Christmas extra special this year. Join us in the Big Give. so so good um if you haven't got your tag already we we'll just encourage you to get one yeah. and it's exciting doing so the shopping exciting. for these children yeah. um just thinking of their anticipation and their faces when they open their presents um and it's just it's, it's a way of spreading the love of christmas um let's get involved if we haven't already yeah. um, and and what i love about it Lamade, is that it's it's all about a heart of generosity yes. generosity for other people mm. generosity for our community and mm. those that need it and that runs through and through is one of the core values in our church as well Absolutely. so come on get involved all the details where can people find those Lamade? social media social media and awesome. if you're not following us already follow us on instagram at citygate church or youtube but all the details will be um, below in the link below yeah we'd love you to be involved right now though we're going to join Pastor Jay for the next part of this series, God Will Do It Again. So come on, as we gather around the Word of God and hear the preached word today, let's open our hearts and let's, let's really believe that we're going to receive from God, that he's going to give us a word for today. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that it feeds us, that it strengthens us, that it gives us courage and hope. And Father God, today we open our hearts to you. We want to hear from you right now. Amen. So Father God, let this word speak to us in such clarity Amen. with what you are saying to us and where you're leading us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Psalm 126. When the Lord, let's all read this. This is a great psalm, amen. So let's read this. Let's go for it. One, two, three, read. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. What a wonderful psalm. 
we began to, you know, to go through this last Sunday, and I've entitled this little series, God Will Do It Again. That's what this psalm is all about. God, you did it. You did it. You set us free. You got us out of captivity against all the odds. You did the impossible. You're the God of the breakthrough. You said it would be 70 years, and it was 70 years, and you got us out. But now something's, <coughs> excuse me, happened. Something's happened, and they're saying, God, you need to do it again. You need to do it again. And you know what? God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. That's something we need to keep telling ourselves and telling everybody else. Our God is a faithful God. He will do what he says he will do. He will send his word. His word will prosper where he sends it. And it will fulfill. I love the, you know, the scriptures in the Bible that says, and it came to pass. And it came to pass. Our lives are to be testimonies of, and it came to pass. I love Acts chapter 2 when the apostle Peter said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. No longer was it just prophetic, it was reality in their lives as a daily experience. He said, that which has been prophetic is now reality in our lives. This is that which was spoken. I believe that needs to be declared by us on a daily basis. The Word of God says, by His stripes you were healed. We need to be saying, well, this is that which was written in Jesus' name. The Bible says in the middle of chaos, He'll bring peace into your storm. Well, we need to be saying, this is that which was promised in the Word of God. Be a, this is that generation. So God will do it again and their heart cry from verse 4 is restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the desert. You brought us back into the promised land in the most amazing way, a, man, uh, a land which flows with milk and honey, and yet now it's like we're back in a desert. And they hadn't been in a desert while in captivity. So it's like they came out of captivity into the promised land, but now they're living like it, as it were, in a parched land. And yet we know our God is the God of the flood. He's the God who pours out his spirit. He's the God who releases the water. I love King David. Oh, so many people in the Bible, I just can't wait to meet. I can't wait to meet them. I don't know, in all the glory that there's gonna be, in all the wonder, in the presence of God, in all the excitement, I don't know if we'll get into these sort of conversations, but I want to ask David certain things. How did you do that? I want to talk to Abram and talk about that unshakable faith. I want to talk about, you know, to David about his, his ability to write Psalms and, and how that just flowed out. And he said, you know what? As I put my hand out, God broke through like a breaking through of floodwaters. <clears throat> wow, don't you love that? God is the God of, a God who speaks in dreams and visions, which stir us up, and I'll be talking that more specifically next week. So anyway, we're going into our first point today, and that's all we're going to cover here in the next 10 minutes, and it's this, God has brought us out of captivity. Can you see all the past tense of that statement? Past tense. And that's what I want to talk about today. It's already happened. God has already brought us out of captivity. A lot of Christians trying to get free. A lot of Christians thinking that they're bound. Well, you have what you believe. That's a very simplistic thing to say, but it's absolutely true. You have what you believe, you have what you say. Be it done to you according to your faith is a very standard scriptural understanding. You know, for Job, which this is probably going to be a highly controversial statement with everything that went on, and I'm not speaking about Job this morning, but he said very, very clearly, everything I expected to happen to me and everything I feared, everything I was, I was expecting has happened. Why? Because fear opens the door to your enemy. Fear opens the door to your enemy. Again, I don't want to go into that today, but God has brought us out 
of captivity. And I love the way this psalm begins. Do you remember what God has done? He's like, God turned our captivity. He turned our captivity. He turned it around. Against all hope, he gave us hope. Against any chance of breakthrough, we had a breakthrough. And I don't know, but I'm never going to apologize for believing God for the best. I'm never going to apologize for believing God that God will turn this around. A lot of people give up hope in a generation. Or they reduce their expectation of what their salvation has actually given them. Hey, the Bible says we have an inheritance. And that inheritance is the same inheritance that Jesus himself has because we're co-heirs with him. And the Bible says, in Christ we've inherited all things. I don't want to get into Bible school stuff here today, but I want to make it abundantly clear that God has already accomplished something so wonderful. He's already done it. With all the emphasis today on identity, And I think it's something we need to get to grips with more and more. I've had so many conversations in the last few weeks. I don't know what's happening, but just in the last few weeks, so many people, you know, talking about identity and gender and all these things. I mean, that is just absolutely sweeping our generation now. We must absolutely go to the Word of God, which is the Bible, and be anchored on what God has said. And from that place, we have compassion. From that place, we have answers. From that place, we have the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit to set captives free. But if we ever depart from what the Word of God says, then we don't have anything to have compassion with. We don't have any answers. All we have is a desire to do good. But it's the written word of God which gives us the power to live our life. And as I was thinking about this today, God has set us free. We're not trying to get free. We're not asking to be free. We are free. Captivity has been made captive. Jesus Christ has won the victory. He has the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He has brought life, he, he has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, through the word of God. With all the emphasis that we have today on identity, we must never identify with the subjective world of our feelings. We must identify with it is written. So if the Bible says I'm free, that's what I'm going to identify with. If the Bible says I'm a child of God, that's what I'm going to identify with. If the Bible says that he's filled me with his love, that's what I'm going to identify with. If the Bible says I have faith, then that's what I'm going to identify with. If the Bible says I can forgive anybody, that's what I'm going to identify with. Because we're in such a generation where we are told to emphasize and identify with how we feel, which will completely screw up our life of victory. Completely screw it up. Oh, but Pastor Jay, you've got to be real to your feelings. No. (laughs) No. Let's all say no. No. This is completely opposite to to what the world is telling us right now. They are saying your feelings are real. Can I say this? Your feelings are not real. They are feelings. (laughs) Feelings come and go. They change. Every teenager needs to understand this. Oh, I feel so in love. And within five minutes, not in love anymore. 
Thank goodness we didn't stand at the altar and say, I feel like I love you. And as long as I feel like I love you, I'll stay with you. Isn't that good? 35 years. And I'm so glad we didn't say we commit as far as our feelings go. (laughs) No, what you do, the Bible is really clear. In fact, I'm going to read just a couple of verses because I've got about three minutes left. Listen to this. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 to 19. Therefore, from now on, this is so powerful, we regard no one according to their flesh. Now, your flesh is your mind, your will, your emotions, and your physical body. What a great verse for the 21st century. Yeah, seriously. Let's really hear what this says. From now on, we don't regard, we don't relate to anybody according to their mind, their will, their emotions, how they feel, or their physical body. Even though that's how we used to relate to Jesus, he's gone now, and we don't relate to him like that anymore. I'm sort of paraphrasing this so you get it. It says this, therefore from now on we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we knew Christ according to the flesh, yet now we don't know him after the flesh any longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a brand new creation. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Now all things in that new creation are of God. And then it goes on talking about how we, we bring God and the world back together again. And that's our job in the earth today. But that's a very powerful passage that says, you know what? We don't relate according to our flesh any longer. How we feel, how we look. No, we relate heart to heart. And we relate according to what the word of God says. So if the Bible says I'm filled with joy, I'm not going to identify with I don't feel very joyful. I'm going to say, no, that's who I am. I love the fact that it says, Lord, you turned our captivity. You've already done it. You've already set the captives free. And it's an absolute, fa- I was going to say fact, but it's, it is a, it's truth. Absolute truth that when you give your life to Christ, from that day on, you're a free person. Amen. Now, we all know that there will then be a lifetime of of things that we need to enforce that freedom. But where are we going to identify? Are we going to identify with the fact that we are free? Or are we going to identify with the fact that we're trying to get free? You see, this is a choice that we have on a daily basis. So let's apply that to, I don't know, to unforgiveness and forgiveness. You know, how we relate to people. Road rage. I don't know. Let's put it into that realm. Oh, you know what? I just can't forgive that person. Well, that's how you feel right now. But it's so important that we identify with the fact to him who has been forgiven, we can forgive. Which is really what the word of God says. Because it's not actually us who's alive, it's the love of God that's on the inside. When we invite Jesus Christ into our hearts, absolutely, we can forgive every time. Oh, but it's really hard. Well, it's only really hard if you identify with your flesh. If you identify with what God has done in your spirit, you know what? By faith, you can forgive every time. What a life to live, a life of forgiveness. So many people in such a mess in our world today who are struggling with areas of unforgiveness. Vengeance. Revenge is such a major theme in our world today. You've done that to me, I'm going to do worse to you. Exposing people, cancelling people, all sorts of things. I thank God that my teenage years are not on the internet. Tell you what, the things I said. (laughs) Hello? Perhaps you're absolutely perfect. I don't know. Perhaps you never said anything that you wish you'd never said. I've said plenty of things that I wish I'd never said. And I thank God that they're all under the blood of Jesus Christ today. But we got a world that wants to dig a lot of stuff up. We got a world that, that wants to remind people of who they were. 
aren't you glad that all old things have passed away when you give your life to Christ and all things become new and all things are of God, that we live by grace, that we're under the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for the fact that he comes in and he cleanses your life. Thank God that even if you had an anger problem when you were born again, you now have the peace of God which passes all understanding. Ah, but I still get angry. Don't identify it. Keep declaring with yourself every day on a daily basis, I no longer walk in the flesh. I now walk in the spirit. And that is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, long-suffering against such things. There is no law, there, is, there isn't anything that the enemy can do to defeat the love of God that's in my heart today. Now we work with people on a daily basis to help people to walk in victory. We'll never apologize. We're all about victory in this church because the Bible says we are world overcomers, more than conquerors. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. But the first step to victory is to identify with who you are in Christ and not identify with who you were outside of Christ. The first step to victory, the first step to authority over that sin habit that seems to be strangling your life is to identify, I'm already free. Ah, but you did it again, but I'm a free man. Hello? Yes, Lord. Are we, is this okay? This is very quick. This is, oh, I've got to finish. Oh, let's all stand to our feet today. Did you enjoy that? Yes. There we go. That's all you're getting today. <laughs> Turn to someone and say, I'm free. I'm free. Okay. Freedom. We're identifying with our freedom today. Father God, we thank you. Yes, Lord. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you, God, that you've turned our captivity. When we give our life to Christ, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. And whilst, Lord, we absolutely need the breakthrough power of the Holy Spirit so many times in our lives, we thank you, God, it's from a place of freedom. It's from a place of authority over the enemy, a place of putting our foot on the neck, as your word says of every plan of the enemy to steal, kill, or destroy what you've given us from our lives. We thank you, God, that we're healed. We thank you, God, that we're full of peace and joy and love. We thank you, God, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can endure hardship or love abundance. Lord, we can handle anything that's before us because that's what we identify with. We don't identify with our feelings and our flesh and our sexuality and all of that. God, we identify with who we are in Christ. And from that place, we take captive every thought. From that place, Lord, we pull down strongholds. We lay hold of your incredible spirit of joy and freedom in our lives. For he who the sun sets free is free indeed we thank you for it God today right now let God just by his spirit do something supernatural in your life perhaps you've been saying you know what I'm just a mess perhaps you just say you know what there's no hope for my situation perhaps you say that 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 thing that you know is not God's will is just inevitable in your life. There's no way out of this situation. Perhaps you're identifying with the fact that you've just got some addiction in your life and it'll just always be there. Some habit, some thought process, mindset. And that you say, well, it's just me. No, it's not just you. You are a son, a daughter of the living God. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, That thing is illegal in your life. It's a squatter that we need to get out. So Father, we thank you that all old things have passed away and all things have become new in Christ, on the inside, in this new engine you've given us. We thank you today for freedom. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And right now, with every eye closed and every head bowed, and. Perhaps you're here today and the first step of this incredible life in God is to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. And 
We ask this question every week and every week people respond in their own journey, their own situation. Perhaps for you, it's like a moment of absolute transformation. Like, wow, I never realized that Jesus loved me and, uh, and he died for me and I just want to give him my life. The Bible says that you need to humble yourself and say, Jesus, will you come into my life to be my Lord and Savior? Perhaps you're here today and you know you're living a bit of a hypocritical life. You think there's no way out. Well, there is a way out. And that way out is to say, God, I come back to you today. And I give my life to you afresh. Perhaps you're here today and you're struggling to try to breathe in your spiritual life and trying to come back to God in some way. Well, friend, you're not here by accident. So if you're here today and you want to respond to Jesus in some way, whether it's that first time decision or whether it's to give your life back to God again and say, God, I'm sorry I've grown cold in my relationship with you. Or perhaps you know you need to enforce that. You know what? Today's a day of change. I'm a Christian, but I know I'm not living like I should. Whoever you are here today, with every eye closed and every head bowed, I'm going to ask you to do something very public, but no one's looking around. But it's in the context of this hall, and that is to lift your hand to say, yep, I need prayer. I want you, Pastor Jay, to pray with me. If that's you today, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, people across this room, whether it's a first-time decision or whether you're coming back to God today, today is a day of change. He who the sun sets free, come on, and say, God bless you. Somebody else, come on, don't leave this place. God bless you without making a powerful decision. Wonderful, well done, awesome, absolutely brilliant. People responding to God. We're all going to pray a prayer now, and that's just going to be a very general prayer, but you know what you're saying from your heart. It's receiving Jesus as Lord again today. Come on, let's all pray this prayer with a faith and a confidence. Say, Jesus, thank you that you love me, that you came to die on the cross to give me life. Thank you, Jesus. I receive you today as my Lord, my Savior, and my friend. I turn away from the way I've lived, apart from you. And by the help of your grace and your power, I will never be the same again. I receive eternal life in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate, shall we? That's wonderful. Wonderful God, wonderful God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What an amazing message we've just heard. Lamide, I don't know about you, but there was so much richness in yeah. there. What did you get out of that? Yeah, um, definitely I've, I've been seeing a life lesson from that um, in how I identify myself. Um, when this is contradictory to how I'm feeling, it doesn't matter. Just yeah. continue to believe what the Word of God says. Yeah. Um, I, I love how we do have feelings and feelings are real, but God's word doesn't change That's the way it. our feelings yeah. change. Yeah. And I mean, it's just something that I'm, you know, for life, as I say, you know, for whatever phase I'm at, is something to continue to carry, yeah. carry with me and definitely for everyone at home watching as well. Yeah, so true. Uh, you know, stuff that is in there, such truth that rings true for all of us. You know, maybe for you today, it really spoke to your heart. Maybe there was just a yearning uh, for that relationship with God and that steadfastness that we get from His Word and knowing who we are in Him really spoke to you. And you, you prayed that prayer, that salvation prayer at the end of today's message. We would love to connect with you. You know, this is where it really counts, yeah. Lamade, isn't it? That we respond and we say, yeah, that was me. Uh, and I want to come back into a relationship. Maybe it's a coming back to God for you, or maybe it's a first time decision, whatever it is. We want to encourage you to hit the link that's just below in the, in the description that says next steps. And one of our team will be able to get in touch with you. We've got a gift that we want to give you and we want to help you in your journey of faith today. Lamade, that's all we've got time for. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, please remember the big give if you haven't already and um, follow us on socials. All the details will be there. Um, and see you next week. See ya.
Yeah.